I find myself in complete agreement with Ms. Lofgren. This is not a matter of special protections for journalists or public officials. This is a matter of the Fourth Amendment right of every American citizen. It was, it was John Adams, who was certainly in a position to know, uh, who uh, said that, in his opinion, the American Revolution uh, started uh, many, many years before 1776 with the king's abuse of general warrants. That's when he said the child liberty was, was born. We wrote our Fourth Amendment to, to assure that uh, such abuses could never threaten Americans. Uh, Professor Turley, I'm not an attorney, but perhaps you could give me a little bit of school. It's my understanding that if the government wants to go through my papers to search for a document, an incriminating document, it first has to go to a judge, convince that judge there's probable cause to believe that I've committed a crime, and that the evidence for that crime is likely to be found among my, my papers. Is, is, do I have that correct? That is correct. They have to satisfy the senator probable cause. So d does it make a difference if that paper they're looking for is in my safe deposit box at my bank? Uh, no, and, and that's the oddity about this, this situation is that because of this new technology and storing on the cloud, suddenly a large amount of your information has become vulnerable to being seized. But why would that make any difference? It could be seized sitting in my safe deposit box, but they can't just go and seize it. They have to first abide by the protections afforded me under the Fourth Amendment. Is that correct? Uh, it shouldn't. And what they're getting through metadata and other types of searches is a great deal of information uh, that people would believe is, is private. My, my point is, whether I wrote those incriminating words on a piece of paper or wrote them digitally, it's the same thing exactly. Whether I store them uh, uh, at home or in, a, or in a safe deposit box in the case of a paper or on somebody's server in the case of a cloud, it makes no difference. It is the same thing. That's right. And what's particularly bizarre here is that the most famous case of the Supreme Court in the privacy area is Katz, where the court said that the Fourth Amendment protects people, not places. And yet we have the ultimate rejection of Katz, because if you move information from one place to another, it suddenly moves out of a warrant and probable how cause we, protection. How have we allowed ourselves to get so far from these fundamental Fourth Amendment principles that, that underpin our, our liberty? It's really uh, two things. One is the court opened us up for this when it decided in cases like Smith v. Maryland that pen registers don't require uh, warrants. Um, and a lot of that's based on a myth. The court said, well, you give your phone number to a third party, i.e. the telephone company. Well, it used to be there really was a human being there putting in your phone number. Now, of course, you're giving it to a computer. So people are not giving their information to a third party knowingly. But the court has never corrected that misunderstanding, in my view, of the privacy dimension. The other aspect to this is just new technology. We have constantly seen privacy protections uh, that have failed with new technology. Well, and this age we're living in is making a mockery yeah. out of the standards because, created because by the, the court. The, the technology may change, but human nature doesn't change, and the principles of, uh, that, that undergird our, our Constitution don't yeah. change because they are rooted in human nature. And Representative Clinton, I also want to note that there's a, a, a growing gap because the court just decided in Carpenter that you need a probable cause determination and a warrant to, to get the location off people's cell phones. And all of us celebrated that as a victory of the Fourth Amendment. And yet you don't need a warrant to get information from the cloud. And from a privacy perspective, this is not just nonsensical, it's dangerous. Yeah. Well, I, I just wonder, how, how are secret courts and secret subpoenas and secret letters compatible with a free society? And, and, and can a free society exist if its government can, can secretly surveil its citizens in this manner in direct contravention of its most fundamental law? Yeah, and one of the great dangers, by the way, Katz has within it a seeds of its own destruction because it bases the test of privacy on our reasonable expectations of, of, of privacy. So as our expectations fall, the government's ability to engage in warrantless surveillance increases, yeah. and that can become this race to the bottom. And they, and they say and, this is necessary for our, our national security, uh, uh, for our country, but the only oath that any public official takes 
is not to support and defend the country, not to support and defend the government. It is to support and defend the Constitution. There's a reason for that. Our founders understood if we ever lose our Constitution, we've already lost our country. The uh, time of the gentleman has expired. Mr. Cohen. Um, unmute your mic. 